so the way in which you pay it back is dictated by how successful your business is. I think that to me is a really valuable mechanism, which I probably didn't appreciate initially, but I certainly do now. And it just sort of, again, provides you comfort uh, and ultimate flexibility that in a good opportunity, you can make the most of it. And then if something is unforecasted or you don't expect it, you've got that stability behind you and a scale of the partner. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Wayflyer Founder Series. I'm Paul Waddy. I'm an e-commerce advisor and uh, author of Shopify for Dummies and Selling Online for Dummies. I'm also a strategic advisor at Wayflyer. Um, I'm very excited to have our next guest on here in the series. Um, we've got James Smith, who's the head of commercial at Merry People. Uh, James, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Great to be here. Yes. Well, we've met each other before and we've done some work together before. I'm super impressed um, by what Merry People's been up to. But for those that might not know Merry People, um, James, can you give us the, the elevator pitch on um, who founded Merry People, uh, it's, how long it's been around for, for, what they're selling, what you guys are selling and in what markets? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the business has been founded since 2014 by Danny Holloway, so a girl from Gippsland in country Victoria essentially tried to solve the problem of the fact that um, she came from a country background um, and gumboots was the most versatile footwear item for her back then. But there was something missing in that city hybrid lifestyle um, that we sort of a lot of us live in these days. And so it was really about trying to design a product that was full function, that had the practical and modern versatility. Um, and so we sort of brought the Chelsea boot and the gum boot together. Um, and that's what's become sort of our really famous now uh, Bobby boot. Yeah, and it's uh, I, I love it because um, more and more I, since I first met you guys, I'm starting to see the um, the, the staple bright colours uh, pop up pretty much everywhere. And I imagine uh, we've had a lot of rain lately, so I imagine you guys have had a pretty good 12 months. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look, it's um, I think front of mind, you know, when it does rain, people front of mind, it, it definitely helps when you're selling a boot. And I think that's probably a challenge that we're working through is that there's still, a, I guess, a misconception around that a gum boot has to be you know, a tall boot or it needs to be uncomfortable or, or you have cold feet and the only thing you wear them for is just to keep your feet dry. Uh, and that's what we're really working through is to try and change the conception around that in, in fact that they can be comfortable, they can be warm uh, and they don't just have to keep your feet dry. Um, and that's really where that sort of ankle uh, Chelsea boot has really sort of performed quite well in that city lifestyle and definitely, um, you know, feeding in for the corporate worker um, the dog walkers, whatever it might be, um, it sort of just helps you get through those sort of rainy days. Yeah, and they look great. So if anyone's tuning in, check out Merry People. They are um, they're super cool gumboots, basically. James, I want to ask you a bit about your background. Um, you're the head of commercial at uh, Merry People now. How did you find yourself in e-commerce um, in a company selling gumboots? It's a good question. Um, certainly not one I ever thought I'd get to either. Um, it's Look, I've had, I had a great start to my career in professional services really felt that I had a good strong backing of skills and um, around sort of accounting and finance and just overall you know day-to-day -day running of businesses I was fortunate in my prior job um, but then yeah coming to e-commerce has been amazing like I've loved super collaborative environment even though there's been COVID but you know all sort of startups whether they're you know more advanced than us or slightly behind us um it's been great to be able to speak to different founders and people in my in a similar position to me to understand what works for them um and it's been yeah again the wealth of um, knowledge that people have has been great and everyone's always been willing to sort of take time uh to sort of help you along the way and i think that's been yeah a really great experience um but and ultimately yeah, danny i met through, danny through a partner nick um and you know we we're discussing that I was looking to sort of move on to where I was currently working um, and it was a great fit and it's, you know, I think it's super important. You've got to be passionate about, you know, the, the brand, if you are in e-commerce, the brand or the product, um, you've got to be passionate about it. You've got to see the vision um, and that's something that absolutely I live and breathe it day to day and I guess, yeah, I, I just, I've loved every minute of it. Yeah, that passion is pretty evident and you're, you're, and you're pretty passionate about the numbers, which is obviously why you're, you're on here talking to me about, um, about e-commerce funding, which is a, a really topical uh, thing at the moment. We, we might go back to, um, as well, Danny Holloway, the founder. Um, why did she get into gumboots? Did she uh, walk through a massive 
puddle one day and enough was enough? Or how did she start this business? Yeah, it's, it's an awesome story. So Danny um, came through country Victoria, so in Gippsland, and she, she moved to the city. So she always grew up with gum boots, being on a farm. And then when she moved to the city, um, you know, it would have been, you know, walking to a corporate job in the rain, in, in boots that weren't waterproof. And that was the first sort of aha moment. Going to festivals again was like, mm, that gum boot's still not there that I visualised. And ultimately, there's a few more moments to being, she essentially said, well, why can't I start my own business? Why can't I just create a prototype boot and, and, and the way I think it should be done and give it a go? And so she she did that all on her own. Um, you know, she flew um, to China and to try and find a, a factory that would take her on board and created a mould and, and sort of then took it back to small little independent stockers to see if they thought that, it had value and they did. And so that's initially how it started. Um, and she sold at farmer's markets Saturday, Sunday, while working a job Monday to Friday. And then it was just some good advice given that this isn't scalable or sustainable. Um, and that, you know, you, if you want to take it on, you need to, you need to go online. And so she did sort of in 2018. And then from there, it's really had that significant growth, but having that sort of grassroots feel has really helped it. And, you know, having that real good understanding of who that customer is, because there was so many, sort of physical experiences, it was quite clear, okay, that this person wears this boot because of because of this is what they do or in their life, or they like the boot because of this. And that really helped guide, I guess, the product strategy and the brand story. Now, James, so we've met before. Um, you've got a financial background, obviously, as the head of commercial there, so you're writing the numbers. Um, you've decided to work with Wayflyer uh, to help you grow your e-commerce business. And for those tuning in that uh, might not uh, know Wayfly, we might start there, but it's a basically it's a, a revenue-based finance company founded by e-commerce people, which is why I love it. Um, James, could you talk to us a little bit about the process of um, how you decided that Wayfly might be able to help you, why you chose Wayfly over some of the others, and, and maybe some ways uh, around how you've, uh, some strategies around how you use the funding? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, when we came into the business, I mean, Merry People, uh, we have a, it's a seasonal business in that, you know, our boots typically sell more in autumn and winter, and then we sort of have a, a slower period o over the particular summer months when it's a lot warmer um, and it's less sort of front of mind. And that's also the time in which we uh, have to in increase our stock levels in preparation for the, the peak season. So we have, a, I guess, a cash crunch, if you like, and that's really, uh, so that was partly to sort of help with us, um, to sort of sort of support us through there. But also, you know, we're a bootstrap business. Um, we've never had equity funding. Um, and we've all been about, you know, having to find funding to be able to support our sort of rapid growth. And so we knew we needed a partner um, that was not only just able to fill sort of a void over the summer months, but also could be a really scalable partner. And so when we looked into the sort of, you know, the options out there, um, revenue based financing made sense to us. Um, you know, it obviously you shared the risk in that, you know, your sales would, you know, would slow down, um, then you'd be paying it back at a shorter payment period. And on the flip side, you know, if you were selling quicker, it wasn't necessarily, you know, a bad thing that you were paying it off quicker. It was just the fact that, you know, you were growing quickly. So it was sort of a win-win situation from, from our point of view. Um, from being a numbers person, as you mentioned, I was uh, probably when I looked at debt, I always thought about it as, as the cost of the debt. And I think my mindset's really shifted from the cost and cost was initially the number one thing to me. And so when I looked around, I was looking for that, I guess, not necessarily the cheapest option, but one that did definitely seem like more value for money. And Wayfire certainly ticked that box, but then it was sort of moving through, sort of as we've sort of evolved and understanding and having a different relationship with, with debt, is that debt isn't a bad thing. Um, you know, too much debt is a bad thing, but debt, you know, provides you a lot of flexibility, a lot of versatility, and it can often open new doors that you wouldn't necessarily be able to. So you can be more opportunistic, more mobile. Um, but then also on the flip side, in the event that something does go that you don't expect or it's unforecasted, then you've got that protection as well. Um, and so really Wayfly for us was you know, a reasonably cheap uh, cost per capital, uh, but also the flip side, it just gave us ultimate flexibility to do what we wanted to do. I think you nailed it there. Debt is not always a bad thing. And um, remembering back to... Um, our discussions previously, you're, you're a pretty shrewd operator when it comes to the levels of inventory that you like to hold. Now, you mentioned earlier, let, let's break this down a little bit, seasonality for merry people. 
So we've got a business that's selling essentially gumboots. Uh, so we know that, that it, it doesn't get much more seasonal than that. So you must go through these tremendous revenue spikes and then these lulls in your revenue. Um, and often, you know, I have a footwear background as well. You can often find yourself having to fund your orders during the lull to get ready for the spike. So is that an example of how you might use Wayflyer to sort of fund those orders that you're placing during the lull? And as you point out, you get the flexibility of paying them back, uh, paying that funding back as your revenue grows. Absolutely. So, you know, we typically, we, we, we executed funding with Wayflyer in November and we sort of paid it off at the end of February, start of March as our peak season sort of commenced. And it was sort of perfect timing within that. And then, yeah, sure, we were paying for a lot of sort of big orders that were arriving January, February. Chinese New Year's another thing that's sort of therefore you have to back end the orders in December, early January, because there's not a lot of uh, production occurring in, in sort of mid-Jan to mid-Feb. Um, and so, again, you're paying for a lot of stock up front when your sales are at its lowest point. So that's definitely where you need a, a funding source such as Wayfire in, in place. And I guess, you know, with our long lead times and, um, you know, we have potentially four to five months, probably five months lead times where we're locking in an order four months in advance and it's, you know, then 30 days on water. Um, and so, you know, when you find out you've got a stock shortage, it's too late because uh, you just can't move more than five months in advance. So that's really then another level that you need to back yourself even further that, you know, if you think you're going to say double growth and you do two and a half times growth, that's eating into your surplus stock. Um, and you need to then look at um, ways to sort of, if you want to then go two and a half or three times stock levels, um, then you, you're going to need some source of funding behind that. And that's really where we sort of had started having discussions with Wayflyer. That's a really interesting point that a lot of retailers are finding um, at the moment is the difficulties in forecasting. Um, year on year comparables are almost worth nothing at the moment. And so then the question is, how much do I need to order? And I know f through previous conversations with yourself, you've always um, wanted to really balance that ordering frequency without loading up on stock too much to preserve cash flow. So um, does Wayfly kind of take a bit of that away from you in that you can probably go a little bit deeper into inventory and and, and hold a little more than you normally would. And, and, and if I'm hearing correctly, maybe reduce the amount of stock outs that you might've been having. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, you know, with um, this being an accounting background, that conservatism as well, apart, you know, not only just the cost of capital, but then also like, you know, having cash tied up in, in stock and cash is king and the idea of just in time ordering doesn't, can't exist right now um, in, in, in the global supply chains that we, we have with COVID. Um, so definitely having something that allows you to back yourself a bit more and we are getting better at it. But again, when you find out you make a decision, say September, October last year, and then, you know, you have your growth in March and April, for example, um, when you have a stock out, it's due to decisions that you've made five months earlier. So we feel that, um, you know, we're then having to chase our tails a bit throughout the peak season. Um, but then we know that, um, I guess having a debt funder now in place that we're, we're in a better position for sort of peak season next year. That's great. So essentially, um, it sounds like the way you've been able to use Wayflyer to fund um, fund your in some of your inventory has probably accelerated your growth. Is that fair to say? Yeah, totally. And it's just opened us to a different mindset in allowing us to back ourselves and be confident. And as you mentioned, comparables is... You know, it's challenging. Uh, we're fortunate that you know our year-on-year -year growth and the seasonality of the business has been you know reasonably able to be predicted this year, which has been which has been great. Um, but on the flip side, it's just the fact that you can you know back yourselves with confidence, knowing that you know you can order what you think you need um, in regards to chasing your ambitions. But at the same time, if it doesn't quite get there, you've got someone in place to be able to support you, and, and, and if it's going to be a bit slower than you anticipated. James, if there's people listening who um, are running businesses out there, other CFOs and commercial types, or some founders, what advice would you give them about um, taking funding? Because um, funding can be taken sometimes for the wrong reasons. Um, Wayflyer do their due diligence on businesses before they lend. Um, funding can also you, you, you touched on this earlier, have a bad name and, and, and you, you pointed out that debt's not bad. Um, 
And you've also demonstrated how merry people are able to hold more inventory to essentially uh, result in higher sales. What's some advice you would have for businesses who may have been in a similar position, running out of stock, or maybe see other opportunities to grow, but they can't necessarily uh, access funding? What would be some advice that, that you would give them? Well, I think in, in, in the first instance, when you're speaking to funders, even if, you, if say you go down the path of speaking to, to funders, I think it's really important that you have to have credibility and you need to be really clear and decisive around what you're trying to achieve with the amount of money that you're asking for. And so to not just pick a round number being like, we need 500,000 or we need 1 million or whatever it might be, it's about being really clear around, okay, I need this amount of money because this is what I'm trying to do and this is what the end results will, will be from that. And it's been, and I think that just instantly provides um, you, you seem reliable, you seem credible, you know what you're talking about and being an expert in your subject matter around your business and how it works, um, that's super important because I think yeah, having a clear plan and why you know this debt or this funding will, uh, will uh, ensure that you execute that um, is, is fundamental in, in, in speaking to a funder. And, and talk us through the process. Um, did you look at a few other lenders? Were you looking at banks? Were you looking at private equity? How did you get to um, to find Wayflyer? And then tell us about the process of of actually meeting with Wayflyer and then getting funds in the bank. How was that? Yeah, so look, it went for a few uh, for a couple of months, more from just the point of just like we initially got you know uh, Wayflyer reached out initially, uh, which was great, but it was during our peak season. It wasn't, and also it was, I think it was my second week of starting uh, at, at Mary People, so it wasn't the timing wasn't quite right either. Um, but it was great just have like that consistent informal conversation. You know, every month or so, it might be just. You know, how are you going? How's the business tracking? And then, sort of, as we we're ready to have those conversations, um, you know, we picked up the phone and, and reached out to the same person, which was great. Um, and then the process moved really quickly. Um, you know, it was great to be able to get some offers in place. Uh, we were able to compare them to other lenders. Um, you know, Wayfire, from a cost point of view, and the timing and what they could offer um, was definitely the best deal out there in the market compared to some other advisors uh, or funders, I should say. Um, you know, banks. It is challenging with the security profile. You know, if you're a small, if you're you know, an e-commerce business, and say you don't have a house or whatever it might be, your security profile is essentially your stock. Um, and the idea of you know having X amount of gumboots as as your security is not super appetising for some for some funders, which you know I, I get and understand. So I think that you know cool, ruled out initially having an unsecured. We needed to have. An unsecured provider, which was, you know, obviously that then looked into the revenue-based financing, um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, Wayfly process. The team was super friendly. Um, they were. It seemed to be more around like they weren't just trying to make a deal for themselves, but they actually cared about the business. They wanted to make sure it actually made sense um, to to marry people as well, and, and, and was going to support our growth. Um, and and essentially, it's, it was a pretty informal process, which was great. And then once we sort of Added the dashboards, got the offers. We then went through the sort of the DD process from there. Let me talk to us a little bit about the dashboards. This is something that people don't um, often realise about Wayfly. But I mentioned earlier that um, Wayfly is founded by not by bankers but by e-commerce people, and they understand e-commerce and that's part of their due diligence. But um, they do have this dashboard that provides some pretty pretty interesting analytics. Um, did you use that and, and were you showing that and how did you find it? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I um, I have pretty Excel numbers and, um, and and tables more than graphs, and I but I, I love a dashboard that's super interactive and, and, and see, particularly in the graph lines going up, um, that's always quite enjoyable. Um, but yeah, yeah you know, to, to mix that through day to day, month to month, um, or weekly, you can split it by day, weekly, monthly, and compare year on year comparison. That was awesome just to be able to see that super visualization. It was, and it was also easier to sort of, um, I guess, paint the picture about, no, no, we are on the right track or we're this far ahead of, and just having a visualization tool was super powerful. And then obviously also part of that, you know, your cost per acquisition, feeding that into the Facebook, your Google, and, and seeing that as well um, over year on year comparison, that was quite helpful as well. Yeah, and so this is something that people listening might not know is that um, this is not about going to a bank with your hat in your hand uh, and a retailer could really approach Wayfire and um, simply start by connecting to their Shopify store and, and using the dashboard and using some of these analytics that James is talking about with the idea being that they can actually help show you 
this is what funding will do to grow your business. It, it, and, um, you know, James, you, you have a CFO's background, but do you think that even people, you see a lot of people in e-commerce who are typically creative people and who might not have that financial background but sort of think, I think that I need some funding. Wayfly can actually help with a bit of that um, research, can't they? Absolutely, and to be able to just, again, the visualisation tool, it's it's very easy to follow. Um, yes, if you don't have that numbers background or data is not necessarily something that, um, you know, you feel comfortable with, um, it certainly helps to have, you know, a tool that sort of connects to all your power, all your, your, your dashboards, and from there, um, you know, can give you some more meaningful insights in, in an easy to comprehend manner. Um, and then from there, you know, you can see, you know, hopefully seasonality, if you, if, if you do have that, or, you know, your cost per acquisitions at certain times of the year, again, daily, weekly, monthly, um, as well as sales, which I feel like a lot of people look at top line, um, but it's also really important to look at your cost base as well. Yeah, great, great advice. James, um, what what do you think the future holds for Merry People? So Merry People's had a great couple of years and holding more inventory um, has resulted in, in, in some revenue growth. You've got the, your typical, I think it's called the Bobby Boot, if I remember yeah. correctly. Um, what's next? Are you looking at product diversification? Are you looking at new markets, other countries? What, what's, what are you thinking for Merry People at the moment? Yeah, so look, we, excitingly, we, we launched in the US about 18 months ago, um, which, has, which has been great. And again, they have that sort of opposite season, so that we hope, therefore, that as they get bigger, that seasonality will balance out. Um, so we've been in the US for about 18 months, and then we just launched in the UK about three or four months ago, which is super exciting, We're, and I guess the home to the Wellington boot. Um, but that will come with challenges in regards to, you know, different competitors. The landscape's very different uh, in the US and the UK compared to Australia. Um, and also, you know, trying to, I guess, have that Australian heritage, which, you know, means a lot more to Australians than perhaps those um, externally. Um, so that's really our plan is, um, if you want to call it, you know, worldwide domination. That's where, you know, one, one country at a time, but um, certainly really to consolidate in the US and the UK uh, in the next sort of 12 to 18 months is the plan and then look to sort of other geographies. But certainly, as you mentioned, product mix it, it is massive. And I think that's something that funding can really help with. Um, you know, we're mindful that, you know, the Bobby Boot has been super successful, but, you know, we want to also find the Bobby Boot 2.0 or 3.0. We are diversifying our product mix um, and, you know, and adding sort of you know, different smaller items as well to sort of increase average order value. Um, but then from there, that's really, I guess, part of it is, is increasing product mix, you know, being more relevant to not just the female consumer um, at a certain age group, but being widening that out and sort of, I guess, ultimately increasing our total addressable market. I think that's really important, particularly uh, for apparel and footwear businesses to understand the occasion and, um, and, and then work out a problem for that occasion. And I think too many businesses just put products online and try to sell them, but you know, uncovering um, what problem you're solving for, I think is, is critical. And I think Merry People does that really well. Um, so if, I think that's a really inspiring story as well to be going from farmer's markets, taking that trip to China and now selling in, you know, expanding into the US and, and, and the UK, as you point out, is, is in a short space of time really is, is um, really inspiring for anybody listening. It just demonstrates how you, you can do it. And as you say, how you can bootstrap it. James Smith from Merry People, I've absolutely loved our chat. Um, I admire the way you go about things. You're a good operator. Uh, you approach buying um, and inventory with a real, through a financial lens. And I think that that's, really responsible and what i've learned from you today is really balancing the need for yes holding more inventory to maximize revenue but doing it in a financially uh, stable way so on behalf of wayflyer and the founders series i wanted to thank you uh, james smith from married people for coming on today yeah, nice it's been great thanks paul